I mean, the GPD Win 4 is really like having a portable PS3. We've got enough power here with that Ryzen chip, and the form factor is amazing. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all new GPD Win 4. So I've done a couple videos on this. We actually ran Steam OS or Steam Deck OS in my last video. And in my initial first look video, we were running Windows and tested out a bunch of PC games. But since then, I've had a lot of you asking about emulation. And of course, I definitely wanted to make a video myself, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing with this one. If you're interested in checking out those other videos, I'll leave some links in the description. And we will go over the GPD Win just a bit before we get into emulation, because I know some of you might not be familiar with it. But before we go any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD CD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So when it comes to the GPD Win 4, the design here is obviously really reminiscent of the PSP with some Vita tones, but we've got a lot more power here because this is actually using the Ryzen 7 6800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, and a boost up to 4.7 GHz, but what makes this chip great are the built-in graphics. We've got the new Radeon 680M iGPU, 12 compute units, it's based on RDNA 2, and we've got a clock up to 2200 MHz. The Win 4 also utilizes LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 MHz. We've got a beautiful 6-inch HIPS display at 1080p. It's got an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, and from the operating system, we can actually set this to a few different refresh rates. The screen itself, 40 Hz, 60, and at 1080p, we can actually go up to 75 Hz. And the sound on this thing is awesome. It's using double AC, super linear dual speakers here. They're front facing and this thing gets really loud and it's super clean. Now, obviously there's a lot more to this handheld. So I will leave some links in the description if you want to learn more, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. And first up, we've got some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. Now with this, I'm at 4X resolution, but with a lot of the easier to run stuff, we can even go up to 10. So if you did want to connect this to, let's say a 4K display, you could emulate your PSP games at 4K. On screen now, I've got Afterburner running, and you can see we're pulling, you know, 7 to 8 watts with this game here at 4X, but, you know, when we take it up to a harder-to-emulate game, like Chains of Olympus, at 4X, using the DirectX 11 backend, does jump up there to close to 13 watts. Now, if we drop the resolution down, which would still look great on this HIPS display, let's say 2X, we could get around 8 watts with this one and get better battery life out of it, but I wanted to upscale a bit more here. And as you can see, the game plays absolutely amazingly, so you're not going to have any issues with PSP emulation on this device. Next up, we've got some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. I tested Jet Set, and I also tested DOA3, but the one I wanted to show off here was Panzer Dragoon. Now, this is a harder one to emulate, especially on these Ryzen APUs. I've actually got the 6800U set at 18 watts, and we're not quite pulling it with this one. I mean, we're getting close, 16 to 17. So just know, I mean, with these original Xbox games, some of them will need to go over 15 watts. I've got Rogue Squadron 2 running here, DirectX 11 back in, 1080p, and I'm only at 15 watts. Now, even at 1080p with some easier to emulate stuff, it only pulls around 8 watts. But, you know, on this display here, even though it is 1080, I'd say 720 still looks absolutely amazing, and that's going to give you maximum battery life if you don't want to go down to native. But yeah, kind of just like PSP, I mean, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, GameCube and Wii games are going to run great on this system. Something like F-Zero GX on the hardest to run track, known as Firefield, did pull around 18 watts at 1080p, but we can do under 15 at 720. 
And of course, you know, given the form factor and the look of the Win 4, we had to test out a lot of PlayStation here. It's really giving off that PSP vibe, if you ask me. And PS2 games run amazing on the 6800U. Here's Ratchet & Clank, DirectX 11 back in. Now you could go with their new development build or their nightly build and use the Vulcan back in, but I've always had really good luck with DirectX 11. And to keep it under 15 watts with Ratchet & Clank, 720p is kind of the sweet spot. But moving over to something like Gran Turismo 4, we can do 15 watts even at 1080p. And I think it looks great on this display. I really do like this design here. It definitely makes for a really awesome portable PS2 system. Here's the SimU emulator for some Wii U. We've got Bayonetta 2, Vulcan back in. I am using Async shaders, and we're at 1080p here, and I've got it set at 15 watts. If you take a look at Afterburner here, running great 60 FPS, 1080p with this game, but not every single game is going to be able to do 1080p 60 at 15 watts. You're either going to have to take that TDP up so we can get a little more out of the CPU and GPU, or you could just drop these games down to 720, like Breath of the Wild. So here it is at 15 watts, 30 FPS, the original frame rate, 720p, plays just fine here. Now it will run at 60 FPS, 720 at about 22 watts, but if you want to save that battery life and still have a great time, 15 watts, 720p, 30 FPS. Next on the list, we've got some Xbox 360 using Zinnium. Now this is the Canary build that you can pick up from their GitHub. Forza 2 with V-Sync on, running at 60, and I did have to take it up to 26 watts to get full speed out of this game. Now, with V-Sync off, this will actually run at about 90 FPS, and it's pretty awesome seeing these 360 games running a handheld like this. And even something like Red Dead Redemption is playable on this handheld at around 26 watts. We never really got a true port of this to PC, and I wish they would go back and do it. But again, we've got V-Sync on here. Unfortunately, the 6800U, even at 35 watts, is hard-pressed to run this at a constant 60, so leaving V-Sync on is definitely the way to go. But it is playable. A couple months back, AMD released some new Radeon drivers, and since then they've really been implemented in all of the new updates, and we got a really good performance boost when it comes to OpenGL on these APUs. So now, when it comes to the 3DS emulation using Citra, we can go up to 2x and even 3x depending on the game. At the beginning of 2022, we were hard pressed to run this on an APU even at 1x resolution. And it really came down to the fact that this only uses the OpenGL back in, and we didn't have great support, at least in Windows. But now with these newer Radeon drivers, we're getting awesome performance. Now it's time to check out some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. Demon Souls, we're at 720p Vulcan back in, and if you take a look at Afterburner, we're only at 15 watts. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of games that are going to run really well at 15 watts, but as we already know, there are harder to emulate games that just need a little more. And in order to get more out of the 6800U, we will have to up that wattage, which is going to affect battery life. But we can get a nice boost in performance to play harder to emulate games like Skate 3. I've just taken the APU on the Win 4 up to 25 watts here, and yeah, I mean, it's actually working really well. But there were a few areas where it did dip down into the mid-50s at 25 watts, so you might end up just wanting to go to the 28-watt TDP, which is what all of these manufacturers are kind of considering gaming mode on the 6800U. And finally, at least for this video, we've got some Switch emulation using Yuzu. Dock mode, Vulcan back in, 18 watts with this game. So yeah, it actually does perform really well. I was kind of expecting to have to go up a little more here, given that we're in dock mode at 1080p. And of course, with other games, you will have to go up a little more with that TDP in dock mode. Here's Odyssey. I'm set at 26 watts, and this is one of those games that does require just a little more to run. In handheld mode, which is going to lower the resolution, we don't have to pull that 25 watts out of this APU with this game. So overall, the GPD Win 4 does an amazing job with emulation. It can basically do anything we want to throw at it. It's just a matter of getting that TDP right. And in order to adjust it, you can actually do it directly from the BIOS, or you could use a third-party app. It's really up to you. But when it comes down to it, I've been loving the GPD Win 4. Form factor here is great, screen is beautiful, and it's got amazing sound. I know it's one of the smaller handhelds out there coming in with a 6-inch display, 
but I think GPD has done a bang up job putting this thing together. But if you're interested in learning more about the Win4 or you've been thinking about backing the Indiegogo, I'll leave those links in the description. And like I mentioned, I've got a couple videos already posted. My first look video consists of just kind of a whole overview of the unit, and we did some Windows PC game testing. And the other video I posted, we had Steam Deck OS running on this, so Linux gaming is also possible on the GPD Win 4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you think about this thing in the comments below. And you know, if you're interested in seeing more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. This does support an eGPU, and that's definitely a video I wanted to get out of the way. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this unit, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.